Hey, what's happening, guys? Uh, today, I want to answer a question I get asked a lot about, like, how, how do you choose a, a specific capacitor for the job? I'm not talking about whether you want to choose a ceramic or an electrolytic or anything like that. Let's talk about choosing the right size capacitor. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of keep it easy, but this is going to get a bit technical. So if this ain't your thing, I understand if you don't want to watch it. Anyway, let's say <clears throat> that you need to make yourself a power supply, uh, dual voltage, positive, negative, for an op-amp project. So here, here, here's just something simple I drew up. We have uh, our AC coming in right here. There's our uh, rectifier. This could be a single IC full bridge rectifier. It really doesn't matter. Then we have our two main filter caps here. Uh, each are 4,000 microfarad. Then we have a positive voltage regulator and negative voltage regulator. Smaller filter caps on the outputs of those. A couple diodes to uh, keep transients and stuff down. And then we have our output and of course, you know, across our output. Here would be our load because Nothing matters without a load, right? Because otherwise there's just not any information. So, we have our filter capacitors there to help us control ripple. So what is ripple? Well, ripple is just the, uh, the fluctuation of the voltage. I mean, you know what AC looks like, you know, <clears throat> up and down. DC is supposedly a straight line. Well, when you rectify AC to DC, you're going to have some ripple. So let's, uh, let's roll down here a little bit. Get everything in there. <clears throat> so let's say this is what our unfiltered DC looks like coming from the, the bridge rectifier. What that rectifier has done, it, it has taken those negative going peaks and flip them up and in doing so it has doubled the frequency our 60 Hertz is now 120 Hertz but you, now we have this space here between our peak and our trough and that is the ripple is it bad well it depends on what you're doing um, if you're driving a digital circuit from a 5 volt supply you, your variation should be no more than 5% or you know a quarter of a volt uh, if you're doing a small analog circuit, they can be pretty finicky. It, it might require less than 1%. So you want to keep your ripple down as much as you possibly can, and you do that by using a filter capacitor. So here's our filter capacitor. Imagine this is our V in here. This, uh, this will correspond to what's on the other side of these right here. So there's our filter capacitor. There's our current, and there's our load. So this is what it is looking like after the filter capacitor. So instead of, whoops, you know, we look like this. Now we have this look here. And what's happening, let me draw this out more. This area here is what the capacitor has basically sucked up and is, is changing. But we still have this small area here, and that's our ripple. So we, we want to make sure that we have big enough capacitors to do the job. We need to know how to find the ripple so that we can choose the calculator or the, the capacitors to do the job. So how do we do that? Well, there's a formula. Of course, there's a formula. It's in here. So it is, uh, C is equal to dV over dt. dV is our, is our uh, ripple in RMS. So basically it is the difference between the peak and the trough. And dt is our time. This is kind of uh, hard to calculate. So this is an approximation that I've used over the years. One over the frequency. And then we can get, you know, like 8.3 times 10 to the third. And that will allow us to calculate our ripple. All right, so let's test out our formula. Let's say we have a uh, five volt supply and uh, one amp load and a 4700 
uh, microfarad capacitor. So if you plug those numbers into our formula, you're going to get 510 millivolts. Now that would be over the uh, 0.25 millivolts that we're looking for for a nice steady supply. But one thing you have to keep in mind with is that when you're using voltage regulators, they often have a ripple rejection factor. And it's often given in dB, but you can figure that out relatively easily. Let's say um, your 7815 uh, has a ripple rejection characteristic of 60 dB. So you can figure that out. You can say um, minus 60 dB, of course, is log 20 log 10 over V in over V out. That gives you what? Uh, minus 3 log 10 you know, V in V out or 10 to the minus 3 so that is a factor of 1000 now your factor of 1000 if you plug into that 510 is going to get, end up giving us Watch me, watch me put the decimal place in the wrong point and I'll get yelled at. 0.51 millivolts. Yeah. So that is just a great way to choose your capacitors. Now what you want to do is you just want to plug different capacitance values. Where's our formula? Into the formula until you get what you need. I know, kind of a bit of hit and miss kind of a try and fail see what you get but you know it's kind of the way it works all right hope you guys enjoyed this if you did please give me a thumbs up feel free to comment and share and don't forget to subscribe please please take care of yourselves limit your exposure to uh sick people wash your hands god bless you all that's it i'm out peace I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.